quickly, um, I'm going to run you through a couple of things. What is Kafka? What is KSQL? Um, and I've also set up a, a demonstration cluster illustrating the use case. <clears throat> so effectively today, it's about using um, KSQL, um, KSQL for stream processing. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. Whilst we manufactured this use case is like baked for this presentation, um, it's completely made up, but at the same time, it's, it's quite real. Like people use KSQL to do things like this <clears throat> in the real world. Um, we'll run through what is Kafka, what is KSQL. We'll, we'll go through a definition of the problem we're trying to solve. We'll go through the architectural solution and I'll run you through the demo as well. So if you guys have questions, I'm more than happy. There's like only a few of us. Feel free to interrupt um, in the chat and or even by voice, and we'll talk about your, your question in real time. So let's start with Kafka. Um, Kafka is effectively a distributed system where you produce and consume data. Um, it's analogous to a distributed database. So if you think of a database cluster and people writing to the cluster and people reading from the cluster real time, there's a couple of huge differences though. Um, it's pub sub, publish su subscribe. So for example, let's say you're interested in user data and in transaction data, you would subscribe to what's called a topic, which is analogous to a database table, um, to those, ta to those tables, effectively the topics. So you would subscribe to user data and, and, you know, uh, transaction data. Whenever somebody produces data, i.e. writes data to those topics, um, again, analogous to a database table that information will be pushed out to you real time. So you can have many subscribers to many topics. It's a many to uh, many relationship. Um, you can have many producers as well. Um, effectively, what happens is every time an event happens and you need to divorce your thinking from the traditional database model of updating a row, whenever an event happens, it gets written to the end of the queue here. And they, the consumers, the people that are subscribed to it, that care about this data, read the latest version of that of that data it's an atomic event it's not like retrieve it update it and then put it back in the database it's send it to the db and then attach it to the end of the queue it's effectively what's called a commit log um no questions so far okay so going back to topics a topic inside of kafka is analogous to a database table so users transactions history that sort of stuff so it's basically a stream of data, right? And this is kind of the thing that we're going to do today. A topic is a stream of data inside of Kafka at any given time. We're going to use a couple of streams of data to join them together and basically do uh, targeted advertising based on a user's behavior. Um, let me give you some examples of topics. So trucks sending GPS data um, every 20 seconds, effectively where we're at. Um, the things that care about this thing, the consumers. So let's say you have a notification service. This truck is delivering either food or, you know, items or delivery service. End user cares about where the truck is, where their item is at, where the truck sends the GPS data. This goes into Kafka. Kafka sends it to these things real time. So it's effectively um, fast data um, is the fast is the easiest way I can describe it to you, as well as a whole bunch of other things built on top of it. Now, there are things called partitions and offsets. Um, and this is really important in, in Kafka. What happens is when you write data, you write it to a topic and within the topic, there are partitions. A partition is basically a place where you put the data. Like if you think of it as information sharding, the way you address data in Kafka is like this, topic, partition and offset. So if you look at here, this is the topic. This could be the uh, users table. The partition is the shard where the data goes and the offset is the bit of data that was last written. So this could be the same piece of data as in the same user, but you're interested in the point in time view of that data. So that would be the first data that was written. That would be the last one. Let's say you're interested in you know, what it looked like three weeks ago, which may be uh, offset six, you'd go and ask for offset six. So as a high level concept, um, effectively Kafka will write to a topic 
um, inside a partition with an offset. Again, this is how you address uh, data in Kafka. Now, I was going to go through brokers, but I'm aware that we only have 45 minutes, so I might skip this bit and we'll, we can come back to this later. Um, I'll go through case SQL, and then if we have time, we can go, go back through this. So case SQL is effectively a technology that's built on top of topics and streaming. It's basically a stream library that's been built to enable you to do stream processing real time. Um, at, at, a, at a high level view, think about it as SQL for streams. Now, there's a couple of technologies that underlie KSQL. It's called Kafka Streams. Uh, and those of you who write Java will recognize this. This is effectively a, a bit of code. But what KSQL enables you to do is process a stream real time like this using SQL-like syntax rather than this kind of syntax. So you don't need to write Java or Python, you just write you know, the SQL st structure. And that's what makes this use case interesting because you're not really having to write code to get an outcome. You're effectively writing a SQL statement to process streams real time. And that's what makes the case SQL uh, interesting and powerful. There's a couple of different ways you can use it. You can use it from the UI, CLI, uh, REST APIs, uh, a headless instance of a case SQL DB application. Today, we'll be using it um, via the UI. Um, we'll run through a definition of the problem, but yeah, what you're seeing here, these are KSQL DB applications, the ones in blue. Um, and I'll take you through this, but effectively what they're doing is they're joining streams and they're emitting um, the, the new data, the enhanced data. So, <clears throat> Similar to SQL, you can do things like introspection, show topics. You can, you know, print the data in a table. You can print the data in a stream. Um, sorry, just bear with me. So you can do things like um, go and get data from particular partitions. You can convert the data. You can repartition the data in the new topic. Um, you can do uh, a streaming ETL. So ETL being extract, transform, and load. Uh, what you're looking at here is a use case where you're joining two streams of data and we'll be doing this. Um, from clickstream data to user ID, and you're identifying users that have a platinum level uh, status. So, you know, identify only VIP users. Um, you can also do things like connect it to a database, do change data capture, transform it, and dump it somewhere else. So you can grab a table real time, process it. So in this instance, we've got customers going to MySQL. You're doing processing real time in the middle, and then you're dumping into Elastic to give you an idea of how many customers you've got joining real time. So the power of KSQL is quite broad. You can do the surface area which you can solve problems is very large, but today's use case, we're basically gonna do a, a CDC use case with uh, Clickstream meaning we're gonna use user data and click stream data inside of an application and identify people doing particular things so we can send advertising their way. So this is a real tip, real tell example. So you've got streams of shipments arriving, you've got streams of sales. So you can, as you're selling stuff and your inventory is incoming, you always know the inventory that you have on hand. So this is like two different streams of data, typically two different databases. So what you would do is set up Kafka Connect for each of the databases and then join them and then dump them somewhere of your choice. Um, this is um, monitoring. This is what's called a, a window. We'll use this uh, in a demonstration today. So basically we set up a, a one minute window where there's an error. Um, if the error is more than five, if there's more than five errors in the one minute window, tell us about it. So this is a real time monitoring use case. Uh, we've got a couple of people that joined. Um, cool. Uh, this is an IoT use case. Cars sending telemetry. Um, customers wanting to get to a particular place. Um, applications notifying users how long they have to wait for cars. If it isn't already immediately obvious, this is like the Uber use case. Uh, Uber use Kafka behind the scenes. Um, this is 
one of their uh, use cases. They don't, they're not really open about what um, they use us for. Um, they tend to keep their IP, you know, private, obviously, but this is, you know, we've kind of theorized one of the broader use cases. There's a whole bunch of other stuff they do around predictive analytics as well. Um, but yeah, uh, this is the, the basic, you know, when you're gonna pick me up sort of thing. Um, another use case is uh, anom anomaly detection, like this is for fraud. So somebody's swiping their credit card more than three times in 30 seconds, um, physically impossible for a human, right? If you think about it, you tap, you gotta wait two or three seconds, you tap, you gotta wait two or three seconds, you tap, you gotta wait two or three seconds. Um, notify me about it. So this is like identifying a robot or an application or a rogue actor trying to do something uh, nasty to a credit card. Um, this is a real use case. Um, our banking customers, um, meaning the people that use us uh, for uh, banking, like you can look it up, uh, the big four use us um, effectively uh, for things like this, fraud detection. Um, so before I start, uh, are there any questions about like KSQL and Kafka? I kind of want to level set and make sure people understand the technology. Okay, no questions. Um, all right, so this is the problem statement. We're going to be given uh, <clears throat> clickstream data. Effectively, uh, a clickstream is the behavior of a user whilst they've logged into an application. We'll also get user data, which means, um, you know, user ID, first name, last name, you know, gender, location, postal address. Um, the reason we're joining these two bits of data is because clickstream data usually only has user ID, right? And you need to be able to identify things like gender, first name, last name, postcode in, in most uh, clickstream identification use cases. Because what we want to do is identify uh, women who are in the clickstream, um, identify a subset of women who live in a region, um, identify a subset of women looking at a particular page. And we also want to have um, a region um, page view. So effectively, who lives in this region and what, what pages are they, are they looking at? Um, after we identify this, this data, we'll put them into a new uh, topic inside of uh, Chromeport, and then we'll ship it into an S3 bucket, into an Amazon bucket. Now, just expanding on a use case, this is the data format that the data is coming in. So user ID string, page ID string, view time, basically long, which is number. The result set that we want is we want an aggregate of page views by region, we want who's looking at page ID two, uh, how many women are looking at page ID two, who they are, same for region ID eight. We also want to identify women in the clickstream. And what happens is when we identify those people, we send that data into a topic, an application is consuming data from that topic and we'll send advertising back into the clickstream, um, depending on what data we send it. So at a high level overview, this is, what the solution design should look like. Um, normally we have what's called a metrics endpoint to see the data coming in and out. I won't go through that today because that's kind of neither here nor there. Um, what we'll do is we'll grab the user data, we'll put it into a topic inside of Kafka um, via Kafka Connect. We'll grab the page views data. And again, using Kafka Connect, we'll put it into a topic in Confluent Cloud. Then we'll use those two topics and join them at different points to generate the three bits of, of data or rather four bits of data that we want. Finding women in the click stream and then those three subsets. Uh, any questions before I jump into the demo? No, cool. Okay, so what you're looking at here is uh, effectively the, the solution, the application design. So this connector right here is sending data into Confluent Cloud straight into a topic. It's uncurated. Uh, what do I mean by uncurated? It's coming in in its raw format. We're not doing anything with it. We're not processing it at all, straight into a topic. Um, same thing with uh, cloud users. So effectively, this is the clickstream. This is the change data capture clickstream. So uh, the database, effectively, users table. Um, straight into a topic. And we haven't done anything with it, but now what we'll do is we'll join those two topics 
So we've created a new stream of data from those two previous streams. Uh, we'll call it page views female. What we'll do is we'll get user ID, page views, their gender, do a full outer join on us on users and page views, and effectively emit all the data where gender equals female. So let me show you what the messages actually look like. So there it is there. So I mean, for those of you who are developers, you can tell you can tell that's a JSON payload, right? Um, so what's happening here is we're joining the data and we're sending, you know, this user is a female looking at page ID, uh, page ID, page 73 in this region um, and sending it into a topic called page views female. So effectively, this is the high level subset, like all the women who are currently logged into the application um, and what page they're looking at and what region they're in. So this is like effectively anyone who's logged in who's a woman at the moment, we've, we've stripped out everybody else. Now, a couple of other things to run through. Um, schema. Schema registry is what you're looking at here. Schema registry is effectively the definition of the data type in here, of the, of the topic. If you think about it in a traditional point of view, like a database point of view, these are constraints. Um, basically, data, uh, you know, database table constraints. This is the data type and this is the format it has to come in. Um, are there any questions before I keep going? No? Okay. Uh, Sun, may I have a question? So here we are using JSON format. Is it specified only for JSON format or we can use unstructured data also and do formatting within SQL, JSQL? You can, you can change it. Um, you can recast it as Avril Protobuf. Um, it's basically what's called an SMT, simple message transform. Uh, I think KSQL will do it to, um, Avro quite easily. I don't. I don't know if it can do protobuf. I'll, I'll have to have a look at that. Okay, I'll I'll check for the Avro. Avro is, yeah, looks so, pretty complex for me. Um. Yeah. Uh, question around the same same topic. Like, uh, if we have an Avro schema, which is a bit complex, like you know, multiple levels of nesting, and and a big. Usually, yeah, that's that's what we see. The schema is a pretty pretty big. So when we're working with KSQL, when we're creating a stream, we need to kind of map uh, each fields, right? So I was just wondering, like, if we have a nested schema, like two or three levels of nesting, and if we want to create a stream in KSQL, how how does that? Will it... So again, yeah, without getting uh, too distracted, what you're looking at here is schema registry, uh, the overview. You can have all three schemas, right? Uh, Avro, JSON, and protobuf. The reality is, though, when you're actually validating, schema registry only holds the data. What happens is your producers and consumers will cache a copy of that schema, and they will validate as they produce and as they consume. So they don't talk to schema registry full time. This is basically like a repo. What happens is they pull down the the, the schema reg there and keep it cached. Um, to answer your question, the thing doing the transformation is not schema registry. It'll be either KSQL or a producer or, or a consumer. So Kafka Streams should be able to do that fairly easily, right? Like it's it's built to do transformations. Um, the question is though, if case, I wonder if, let me just have a look. Yeah, so there's a good example here. That's kind of what I was looking for. Um, I'll send you guys the link of this afterwards. But basically, this is a conversion example. Um, how to convert uh, the events to protobuf. So yes, you can. Um, it's just a matter of how you want to do it. So you, this is the other thing as well. When you say it's complex and nested, how how deep of a nesting are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have I've, I've been dealing with these schemas which are like I don't know three 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 levels. So we have like headers and then a body, and then inside the body we have um, a group, and then inside the group we have fields. So like it's maybe three three or three to four. Okay. Um. 
like schema registry should deal with it just fine. It shouldn't be complex. Um, the question is, you know, the conversion might get difficult because if it's nested. Yeah, I was thinking more about like if we want to if, if we want to create a stream uh, to begin with, like let's say just I'm just wanting to just explore the data, like just get a get a aggregate count or something. Uh, so if I want to create a stream, uh, I need to map it, map it exactly to the schema registry, is it? No, you can you can have a schema string. You you don't have to have a schema in, in uh, to have a topic. It just and it, it only means that you're enforcing data. It's just like having a table with no constraints, right? Like you can absolutely create a topic without a schema registry attached. That's not a problem. The thing is that then you open yourself up to things like people inserting bad data. I mean, it's it's bad data hygiene, right? Yeah, no, I'm I'm more talking about the case equal statement. So, so. All right. When you write the statement. Um, yeah. So we, we we want to create a stream first uh, in case equal before we want to do anything with it, right? So I'm I'm thinking. So when we are creating a stream, and if it's a complex schema. Uh, will the create a stream query also need to be like exactly mapping to what we have in the schema or uh, I, I'm just imagining that it, it's going to be a complex query as well because it has to kind of replicate how the schema looks like, right? Yeah, but this is the thing though, like this the schema itself, um, it's basically like you can infer the schema from the stream when you create it, which is what's happened here. But you don't need to have a schema, like at the end of the day. Um, if you trust what's um, underlying, you know, uh, sending your your data, if you trust it, you can just leave it. Um, so see, this is what I mean by schema inference. So effectively, what it does is it infers the data type from the source of the data. So when you create a stream, right, you say create stream as blah, you're joining this, you're joining that. Because of inference, it knows your source topics, right? It'll create a schema based on your, your source data. Um, but you can also turn that off. You don't need to do that. I mean, you can modify the query. So let me show you actually. So this is the, we're trying to find page, page views by region. Um, so gender, region ID, and I'm users. And the, the reason it knows that is because it's effectively, you know, from the data that we're joining, and the, the, the data that we're selecting, it's inferring the schema. It's just inference. It, yeah. The thing that, um, so this itself is an application, right? Like I say application, I mean, it's basically a Java application that's reading the stream, yeah? And then writing to a new stream. So when you're actually writing KSQL, that's what you're doing. You're writing a Kafka streams application that reads from a topic, ingests data and spits something out. Um, and that's why like, that's why there's schema because there's an application talking to schema reg and expecting particular types of data, but you don't have to have a schema if it's complex. Okay. Yeah. What kind of streams are you joining? Out of curiosity. Um, I'm not not joining at the moment. I'm just thinking about exploring. Like, okay, that, that that's a really good question, by the way. Like a, a schema registry question like that. That was a yeah, good question. Um, it's usually in the examples, like if we Google around, we just see a very simple schema users or page views, which has like less than 10, 10 fields defined. Uh, so I was wondering the schema that I'm dealing with has headers and uh, a lot of other information as well. So um, just, just trying to think how, how complex it's going to be, but yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example of, of a complex schema. So we've got a customer, uh, FinTech Financial Services. When they send data, it's transactional data, user data, and there's a checksum, which is effectively a hash that validates what the data was sent was. So if you think about that schema, right, there's the, the checksum, the MD, let's call it the MD5, um, the payload, which is the message body, which also has a schema, and then also like the metadata around that message, like where it sits, et cetera. So, that's been done with schema reg and with ksql and stream processing and they're using it effectively for you know for things like transactionals um you know guarantees this was sent can you guarantee that this was correct blah 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 ordering stuff the other thing is they use it for regulation as well because when somebody does a transaction how do you you know maintain proof that it was their transaction 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like between business units, there's different schemas, but between the organization itself, when they send a payload, that payload must be validated in some sort of fashion, right? And yeah, so that, that's quite a complex example, but it's not uncommon. Uh, mostly it's it's financial, you know, types of organizations that, that do stuff like this. But yeah, it, yeah. On, the other, on the other hand, we have customers. Um, so I'll give you another a real example. Um, Black Friday sales, people logged into an application. Um, what they do is they look at your clickstream data and they embed like inventory stock that they're trying to get rid of. Let's say you're looking at chairs and this particular customer has got like a, a backlog of these chairs that they want to get rid of. They'll start inserting that sort of stuff into your, into your browsing session to get rid of, um, you know, things that they're effectively trying to get out of their warehouse, um, which is similar to this, right? Like targeted advertising. Um, the other thing is like at the point of sales, you know, like when you go to Coles and Woolies and stuff, you're scanning stuff through your loyalty card. Let's say, um, we set up a click stream and what it does is it watches what you're purchasing. Um, let's use Coles as an example. Uh, let's say you buy dog food, you buy dog leash, puppy food, et cetera. All of a sudden it understands that you've got a new dog in the house. Coles also does like pet insurance on the back of your docket. It'll print out pet insurance or it can mail you immediately. Hey, look, you might be interested in, you know, pet insurance will give you extra stuff off. So that's, you know, when I say Clickstream and KSQL has got a very large surface area. I mean, we're talking everything from fraud, fraud, GPS, target advertising, that kind of use case. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite powerful for, you know, for something that's very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so effectively what we're doing then is we're curating the, the topics, um, into the data streams that we wanted. So this is like user ID, what page they're looking at, what region they're in. And again, because we're only targeting females to advertise to, um, these are the queries and then we dump it into a topic. Um, and in this instance. We're dumping it into an S3 bucket just so like we're storing the data somewhere, we're persisting it. Normally what would happen is there would be an application attached to here, reading this data and then sending data back into the, the click stream, like the application. So this female is looking at this page for this long, send her this advertising bit. Um, this is the other thing as well. Like there are companies who do targeted advertising as a as a service, this is effectively what backbones backbones and all, um, it's the ability to get data back to here fast. If you look at the latency here, we're doing this, you know, sub milliseconds type latency. Um, there was one more thing I was going to show you and then we can start taking questions. So what you're looking at here is the, is the actual Kafka cluster. Um, the way I'm generating the data is by using what's called basically a data gen connector. So the, it's obvious by what it's called, right? Data gen, data generation. Um, I'm creating a stream of data of users looking at uh, an application. I'm also creating a stream of data at, of users being registered in, in an application. So I can show you what that looks like real quick basically pumping messages out, not very high rate because we don't really care about it, but yeah, via Kafka Connect. Um, oh, all right, I can stop sharing my screen. We can go into questions. 